Welcome to Seasons of Grace, your daily dose of inspiration. As we journey through the great fast, we'll be reading selections from Father Jack Custer's book, Back to the Garden, A Lenten Journey Through Genesis. Friday of the first week of the great fast, we read from the book of Genesis, starting in chapter 2, verse 20, ending chapter 3, verse 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not to be found a helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Has the Lord God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, Then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, You are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and the dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children. And your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because you have listened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread." till you return unto the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and unto dust you will return. And Adam called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Today we come to the tragic moment when Adam and Eve are tempted and fall. Pay close attention to how the serpent deceives Eve. The serpent is a subtle creature, a master of camouflage. One warm afternoon, I was hiking on a trail that stretched along the top of a ridge for several miles, with smaller paths branching left or right, leading to wonderful overlooks. Feeling like it was time for a break, in the middle of the day, I decided to head to one of these overlooks. 
The short trail I chose quickly changed from compacted dirt to loose boulders. As I stumbled awkwardly on the rocks, I suddenly heard a rattling sound. Even after the sound alerted me, it took several seconds to identify the two timber rattlesnakes no more than five feet in front of me. They blended in perfectly with the surrounding rocks and leaves. I thanked them for the warning, and keeping a healthy distance, we parted ways. For the rest of the hike, I watched my every step. That warning was only given because humans are not on the rattlesnake's menu. Had I been a chipmunk, I would have stumbled right into danger. In fact, as an ambush predator, that's exactly how rattlesnakes catch their prey. They utilize camouflage and stealth and wait for the right opportunity. Temptation is similar. Temptation is stealthy. It can catch us when we are unaware. The tempter also knows his prey's habits and weaknesses. He also knows how to position himself. In the Garden of Eden, the ambush predator uses words. Notice how subtly the serpent hides his real intentions. He begins by eroding Eve's trust in God. You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Just by those few words, the serpent... Just by those few words, the serpent altered Eve's view of God. Notice also how the serpent approached Eve when she was vulnerable, alone, without Adam. Considering the serpent's words, Eve begins to think God may not have her best interests in mind. This broken trust leads to a broken commandment. Eve took the fruit and ate. She gave the fruit to Adam. He also took and ate. Instead of waiting for God to allow them to receive from the tree of life, they hastily grasp the forbidden fruit. What results is a breakdown in all relationships. When God comes back into the picture, Adam and Eve attempt to play a childish blame game. Adam blames Eve, and Eve blames the serpent. Sin harms our relationship with God, but also divides us from each other. Even our relationship with the entire created world is strained because of sin. It is this sin that brings death into the world. The good news is that God has not left us in this slavery to sin and death, but has instead come to free us. Each Sunday during the Great Fast, we recount our salvation in the liturgy of St. Basil the Great. But man disobeyed you, the true God who created him. He was led astray by the deceit of the serpent, and by his own transgression was subjected to death. In your righteous judgment, O God, you banished him from paradise into this world, and returned him to the earth from which he had been taken, but provided for him the salvation of rebirth in you, Christ. And later in the prayer, we recount clearly how Christ frees us from sin and death. He surrendered himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, sold into slavery under sin, descending by the cross into Hades to fulfill all things in himself. He freed us from death's despair and rose on the third day, preparing the way for the resurrection of all flesh from the dead. Since corruption could not keep the author of life in its clutches, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead. We confront serpents on a daily basis. During the Great Fast, we confront them in a more intentional way as the fast sharpens our awareness. Whenever we confront temptation, there will be a struggle, and very often we may find that we have been fooled like Eve and even enslaved to particular sinful habits or attitudes. Once we have been bitten by the serpent, it's easy to be weakened by his venom. We lose strength and can easily fall prey to more temptations. But Christ has come to heal us from the serpent's bite, and the great fast can open us up to his healing power. For reflection, when and where are you most susceptible to temptation? What shape does a serpent typically take on to hunt you? Words, ideas, images, memories, physical sensations, pleasures, worries? What opportunities are there for healing during the Great Fast? Are there any areas in your life where past experience has left you especially weak and vulnerable to temptation? 
Focus your prayer and charity, especially here, and bring these areas specifically to our Lord for healing when you are anointed on Great and Holy Wednesday. Thank you for listening to Seasons of Grace. If you would like to send this episode to a friend or listen again, please visit godwithusradio.org. You can also find previous and future episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and almost everywhere podcasts are available. A special thank you to Eastern Christian Publications for their permission to present Back to the Garden in this format.